Hey fellow world dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you the end game melee build. The full damage of melee, super tanky, powerful, with dot element, spec as well, fully for auto axe when needed. So let's jump straight in. First, this is the special distribution before legendary perks. Important part, strength is put at 15. And then when we look at legendary perks, I have additional strength here. It does not give me ability to add any more perks, but it gives me a little bit more of melee damage and carry weight. It's not incredibly important to have. You can absolutely go without this extra 5 strength and still do great. But if you want to maximize your damage output, carry weight and all this beauty of playing melee build, you can absolutely use it. Hack and slash. Awesome, especially for expeditions when I want to apply poison to group of enemies with machete. And then extra endurance, intelligence, luck. That's my standard special that I use for almost every build. And lastly, Master Infiltrator is not really for damage. Obviously for convenience, what would be the better perk is taking one for the team if you really want to push the damage higher. And I'm swapping for it. Like I rotate between the two. I'm so late into the game that... I have enough perk points to keep swapping, so I either have Master Infiltrator for my own convenience when I'm running around, or I put taking one for the team if damage is really important for boss fights, but even without taking one for the team, bosses really don't live for very long, so it's not even necessary. Now the perks themselves. I'm currently fully spec for auto axe, but if I want to, I have swappable perks, like all those slugger perks can be unequipped and swapped for anything else. This is only required if you want to push your auto axe to the maximum. If you don't, you can slot in carry weight in here, or you can spec more for machete and do even more damage with gladiator, perk cards, and for faster swing speed, martial artist, up to you. I'm, of course, not swapping all the time. Even with slugger perks, I can use machete, no problem, and dot is still great. And other way around, if I would equip gladiator perks, I can still use auto axe and damage is still great. Beauty of melee build, as I say, damage is always great. Fire in the hole, that's for expeditions when occasionally you need to toss a tato. After that, endurance, very high, to be super tanky as a bloodied build, life giver, ghoulish, Cola nut, fireproof, radical, rat resistant. You could swap cola nut and ghoulish for even more rat resistant if you want to, as we are using torn armor that do not really provide any rat resist. But there is food and there are temporary consumables that can sort out an issue when you need some rat resist, so it's not too bad. Then charisma, party boy for occasional alcohol usage and tenderizer for more damage. As you can see, some perks will come in action only occasionally, but as this is endgame build, I can allow myself to use them all. Then, intelligence science perks, as you notice, uh, those are specific to electrified auto axe. They do not work with regular melee weapons, but yeah, auto axe is special in this matter. It works on both portions of auto axe damage, ballistic and energy, so... For extra 30% damage, you can, but you don't need to have it in here. Then we have our agility through hiker for all this awesome carnivore food. Enforcer to force scorch beast to land. Born survival to burn through all your stem packs that otherwise will over encumber you. Escape artist for occasional dodge when you don't want to fight, when you need to capture object or something and enemies are around, you just crouch and they lose sight of you. Adrenaline for extra damage and dodgy for super tankiness. And more tankiness from luck, serendipity and ricochet. Even more tankiness. Class freak, generally helpful with mutations, so you'll have more strength, more tankiness overall. Curator for occasional magazine usage. Star jeans to keep mutations, good with salt to keep food. Now the gear itself. I'm mainly using two weapons. Either sacrificial machete or my electrified 
auto axe. If I would need to heal friendly NPCs, I would switch the mod on auto auto axe to fire mod and put more charisma to get friendly fire. But usually I kill everything so fast that I don't need to heal any of allies as they fine. Without enemies they doing fine. So I keep the damage. I don't have anything to increase the durability because enemies die when I touch them. Therefore there is not too many hits and durability really lasts me long enough. So I don't need it. I have two variants of machete. One is vampire, one is bloodied. This is weapon speed, vampire plus one strength. This is for expeditions. For other enemies, there is this bloodied machete with power attack damage, less damage taken while power attacking. And I have more that I can use if I want to. I don't really need them. Machete and red apple. That's all I need from weapons, to be honest. Then, to force Scorch Beast to land, I have this Pepper Shaker, but any shotgun will do the job. So we don't need any other. I have for occasional event tagging, Quad Tesla. So I do have some other stuff on me, but two melee weapons will do it for most part. Then my armor set is full set of Torn and Yielding. It's hard to get, but I do have it. It's modded with Polymer and Ultralight with chest modded with asbestos lining, so I have extra fire resist, and arms modded with weighted that gives me extra armor penetration that almost never does anything for me. I think L would be the only exception, like the endgame bosses, that have enough armor that extra melee penetration even matters after you already have incisor perk. So I'm not sure if it does anything for everyday usage, for endgame boss, a little bit. My apparel is Ogwa Hunter Hood outfit, and then there is Ogwa Shell backpack. And of course, Under Armour, Secret Services, that gives you the most strength and endurance, so tankiness and damage, as well the most rat resist, that otherwise this build do not have. Now the mutations, the standard setup for melee, so we have Adrenal Reaction, Bird bones for jumping. Carnivore, that's the most important. Carnivore makes you melee build. That's the one mutation that already makes you a melee build. Her mentality for extra special. Mercy pair for jumping. Scully skin for tankiness. Speed demon to move faster. Talons, if I would occasionally want to use an armed weapon. Otherwise, does nothing. And twisted muscle to increase my damage with all melee weapons. And you probably can notice I am running multiple food items. And fun fact, I do not craft those. In case you are new, I already did a video how to swap allies in the camp. As well, where to purchase melee buffs. So allies, I will give you a quick recap. I have that contraption for ally swapping. And allies that you use for shopping is grandma's chair. So grandma and Yasmin, two allies that you shop from for your food buffs as well. I do have Atom Shop item, Maya Luke Steamer, that generates really good melee buffs, uh, I mean melee buffs, carnivore buffs, not necessary melee damage, but extra AP, extra agility, extra carry weight, that's what this is giving me. Brahmin is giving me milk for rat management. Then one other place that you can get your buff from, melee buffs, if you go to White Spring Refuge, go into the kitchen, sit at the table, the robot will approach and trading menu will open and quite often you will find a melee buffs there. And melee buffs you are looking for are the ones that gives you extra 200% damage for one hour. It's all costs just a little bit of caps and you can see what you are getting. I'm not crafting any of those cranberry meatball grinders. I'm buying this, I'm buying... The Myluk stuff is from the Stima. I have all this. Sometimes more. At all times. Easily. That's the, that's the biggest part. With melee, it is easy. Those buffs are available everywhere. As I said, I'm tanky. 100 health. Over 100 health as a bloody. What is Brahmin is doing? Over 100 health as a bloody makes you tanky. Now, rat management, if I need... Radex diluted, 
does not interfere with mutations. 100 is a lot if you have 25 to start with. So that's a lot, 100 rat resist. If I need more rat shield, 300 stackable. I can use multiple rat, rat shields to increase that. Or sometimes I will put my hands on some rat resist food. I don't intentionally go and hunt it. But sometimes I will stumble across it and I will take it. So that what this build offered, the special itself with this unyielding and the amount of strength you have. Look at machete damage. The dot is over 300 to start with without specking for machete. Why I'm spec for auto axe and if I equip auto axe, the damage in here is over 300. Keep in mind that's attack speed of about 200 so... We are looking at 6k DPS with auto axe. It is just insane. That's true. I will show you it in action now. Auto axe and then machete a little bit. So you see what you can expect. And let's show it. So here we're supposed to have my queen. Let's wake her up. Look at this. Three star legendary is like instantly melted. Where's the... Oh, there she is. Let her let let her come out from the water. You cannot attack underwater. That's the problem, even with Mali. You need to get out of the water, Marla Queen. Excuse me. Maybe I should make some noise. Is she lost? Come on. Come on here. Very good. Okay. Oh, I can show you VATS. There is one problem with VATS. Okay, don't stagger me. I would try to show VATS and... Yeah, that's the problem with VATS. If you get staggered inside VATS, you cannot attack. That's the problem with Auto Axe and VATS. Too much rats. Let's be pop some ramen milk. So let's do without VATS. That's the damage. That's the attack without VATS. And you were able to notice that I did took some rats that without taking any rat resist. I'm trying to show you the bad case scenario when you are not prepared, not boosted with all the proper stuff, you are still tanky. Just because amount of help is 100, even though I barely have any rat resist, I can survive it. And with just 25 poison resistance, you are able to see that I'm doing quite well versus high poison. Especially that when I actually attack, my auto axe is vampire, so it heals me. One important thing about auto axe, power attack damage is the most important part. This one, Boost your damage multiplicatively with auto axe. All attacks are considered power attacks. You absolutely want it. So that's how easy it is to kill her. And those are the problems that you will experience with auto axe attempting to use it in VATS. So unfortunately, it is not a very good VATS weapon. It is not. That's why I'm not heavily spec for VATS. There is not too much use case with auto axe in VATS. As well, if I would succeed to attack in VATS, there would be several explosions at like two, three critical attacks. After that, even though I will remain inside VATS, my continuous attacks will not be considered to be done in VATS. I don't know why is that. Is it by design? Is it a bug? I cannot tell, but it is how it is. Now machete. I will show you my bloodied machete so we will see my tankiness as with bloodied machete. I will not be healing from it. I'm healing a lot every time I have Vampire Weapon equipped. So now Bloodied Weapon equipped. And one more time, we're going for worst case scenario. I'm not doing anything to switch my perks for Machete. So I'm still spec for Auto Axe, but look at that. Look at those power attacks. And if I power attack from the sprint, it's short one. If I don't power attack from the sprint, it's the slow swing. So without the swing speed perk, it will be slow if I don't sprint. If I sprint, it is... You can miss. This quick swing. That's very beautiful. And I, I intentionally only swipe once. As you can see. That's the point. That's the dot. That's the only working, functioning dots in Fallout. Rely on machete and torn armor. This added together is giving you this effect and as well on the machete more important than bloody is to have power attack damage it could be vampire with power attack you need power attack damage you need to use the power attack button 
So that's the same button that you toss grenades normally. And I'm running bloodied weapon. I am tanking the damage, no problem. I'm hitting everyone once. And they all dead after that. I can keep running. That's the that's the beauty of that. I, I like this fact that I run and they die a little bit later. Uh, the additional bonus with this approach, if you play with someone else, they still have some time to tag enemies. And if they choose not to, you will still get the kill. You're just giving them time. They just have five seconds if they're running with you to finish them off before poison and bleed gets them. So that, that like being nice for your teammates when you run with them. Use machete and they have a little bit of a time to finish off. Vampire would be even better. Power attack damage is the important part. If I show you the difference, my vampire swing speed, the problem with that is that even if I power attack, I'm slightly short, like this poison will stop before this super mutant will be dead. So power attack damage, if you don't want to swap all the perks, is required. If I would go and swap all the perks, or if I would boost my magazine, I mean my melee buff with a magazine, then yeah, then I could use this faster swing speed, but otherwise you need power attack damage. So that is what I'm using. I have my gamma gun to radiate myself, as I said, reliance on Brahmin milk for micro rat management. Of course you can use rather with diluted too, but yeah, that's what I'm using. And that's the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is fully boosted. Like you boost all your buffs, you get ready, you get your rat resist, everything else. And you can do even better than that. But this is already really good. At least that's what I think. What do you think about this build? That's my endgame melee. I call it endgame melee. It's not really for one weapon. As all you need to do if you want to change weapon to unarmed, to single, to one-handed, to two-handed, is swapping the strength perks. So it's not really like a different build. Just several strength perks need to be swapped if you want to change into different melee weapon. Not everything, that just it. So that's universally melee destroyer. I'm wearing this Ogwa Hunter outfit. I think it looks really well when I'm running with a sword like an Ogwa Samurai. Uh, that being said, thank you a lot for watching. I hope you enjoy and see you all in the next one.